In the previous lesson, we looked at how to add a landscape layout to our project and change how the various views are laid out in that landscape mode. And when you did that, by going to the uh, preview orientation button and choosing switch to layout land, you probably noticed there was a create tablet variation. So we have lots of devices out there. Primarily, though, we're going to focus on phones and tablets, but there's also watches, there's TV, there's other wearables, goggles, things like that. And probably a lot more new devices on the horizon. But how do I add a tablet variation? Because it is a, a different screen size than the typical phone. And then how do I maybe manage different types of phones or tablets that might have different dimensions? So we're going to create a tablet variation. I'm going to go back to my main layout here first. And I'm going to come back to the orientation preview button and we're going to choose create tablet variation. And I'm going to change the device I'm previewing for to be a tablet. I'm going to choose, uh, I created an emulator for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. So I'm going to make that my device. And we can see here what this will look like on that device. It's actually not too bad. Other than my buttons look really small compared to the image. So I want to make some modifications there. And probably my title appears also a little small. Now, when I chose Create Tablet Variation, I got a new layout called SW600DP. If we look at our resources, we'll see we've added that layout in here, SW600DP. So what is that? Well, that is for a device whose shortest width is at least 600 device pixels. That's going to include most tablets. Now, here's the challenge. If I run this, I'm going to make sure I have my, my Galaxy tab for my emulator. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Here then is my I Love Slovenia application running on a tablet, and my buttons all work. And if I rotate this, and I tell it that I rotated, it still treats it as a portrait design, but because of the way I've set up the constraints, my image is taking up the largest portion of this and then everything else falls below outside of the, the screen. So just to recognize when I rotate a tablet, the shortest width is still 600 or greater. So it still applies the same layout. There's a little trick in designing a landscape layout for a tablet versus a portrait. So I'm going to close this and go back to my application. And so again, I'm still working in the SW600DP. Um, I'm going to first fix my buttons. And I'm just going to select each of these. So I'm using a shift click to select. I'm going to change the width, the width layout Let's go to about 400. I'm going to hard code these rather than using constraints in this case. And we'll look at how to do some constraints later that will make this a little bit better. And I'm also going to change these again. Select two mem and let's change the height layout to, well, let's try 75. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to run it again. I'm going to rotate again because I haven't fixed the landscape version yet. So we'll rotate. And there we go. That looks really good. I think I'm going to want to make the text a little bit larger on these buttons. So again, I'll stop, close the emulator. Oftentimes I'm working with multiple views in a layout. Rather than selecting them here, I prefer to select them in the component tree. In fact, I'm going to take this one for the, for the forest and just kind of drag it down in my components. And that way the buttons are all kind of grouped together here. There's nothing on top of one another, so the order really isn't all that important. I'm just going to select those. And 
I'm going to come down into the attributes. We have text size, and we currently have 16 SP. Let's see what 20 SP would look like. That looks much better. So there then is my tablet view in portrait mode. By the way, oftentimes when you're creating a tablet view, uh, you may only want it to be landscape. And so a lot of times people will design it for landscape and not portrait. In this particular case, I want to be able to do both. And I want two different layouts. So I can't choose landscape here and create a second layout for landscape because this landscape really is referring to the land activity underscore main XML file, which is for our phone. And the portrait, of course, is our original layout file. So what I have to do is come down here and choose Create Other. And we have all kinds of qualifiers that we can apply to various layouts. So you can create tons of different layouts for different types of devices. The one I'm going to want here is the smallest screen width. I'm going to add that as a qualifier. And my smallest screen width is going to be 600 dp. And you'll see it's one of the options here. I'm going to say OK. Now, something that already exists, but now I'm going to choose orientation and add that as a qualifier and make this one landscape. And there then is my six SW 600 DP dash land slash activity underscore main XML. And we'll see in the layout file here, we now have a fourth one added in for activity main layout. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky because uh, a lot of the items fall off of the screen here. So I'm going to select the image view. And I'm just going to remove those constraints. And I think what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to have the image over here on the, on the left and my buttons and everything on the right. So I'm going to take the image and just move it over to the left hand side. And again, I'm going to set up some constraints. Let's do 24 to the top. And I'll do 24 to the left. I'm going to come back and add another constraint here in a few minutes. But now one thing I forgot to do here was I didn't change my device preview. So the problem here is if I choose the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, it's going to want to jump to my 600 SW600DP layout. So I'm going to choose a different virtual device here. So I'm going in and choosing the Pixel C XHDPI layout, which is pretty similar to the Samsung Galaxy. And when I do that, I then get uh, a little better view of how this appears on the typical tablet. In the palette, we have a section called Helpers. And I'm going to grab a vertical guideline. The guidelines are used to allow constraints to go to a certain portion on the screen. So I'm going to bring guideline over. And I get this dotted line. This will not show up in my application. I'm going to right click on it in the component tree. And I'm just going to choose center horizontally in parent. OK, so I'm going to take my image. And now I'm going to drag the anchor point from the right hand side to that guide. I'll go ahead and set it 24. Then I'm going to take the Visit Slovenia title. I want to make this a little bit larger as far as the text. So we'll make it 48 point. I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. And then here I'm going to remove that constraint on the left, but then add the constraint back in to the guide. And I'll set this up as 24 as well. I'm going to do 24 all the way around, left, top, right. And then for the five buttons,
going to bring them over. For the title, I'm going to eliminate the constraint, which was to the bottom of the image view. And I'm going to click on the title in my component tree. They all kind of collapsed up at the top here. I'm going to click on the title in the component tree. I'm going to the layout constraints. top to the bottom of, and I want that to be my text view. Now I have constraint here on the title going to the left of my screen, and I'm going to change that. I can change it here. I can just go to, actually what I'm going to do is go to the ones I already set here. We have the constraint start to start of. Well, I want to do the constraint, constraint start to start of my guide. So I'm just going to choose guideline. Remember that these are a chain. So for the bottom one, I want to bring this up a little bit more. It's a little too low for me. There's too much space in between my buttons. Let's just try 100. I mean, a little more than that. Let's try 150. That looks much better as far as the spacing. I want these to all line up. So I'm going to select all of those views in my component tree and choose a line. We'll align the left edges. That looks much better. Now let's run this and see what we're getting. So there's my portrait view of the tablet. I'm going to rotate. Tell the emulator I want to rotate. And there's my landscape view. I want to get this image to be a little bit larger. So I'm just going to grab the guideline and drag it over. It's looking much better. In this case, I may want to make my buttons a little bit narrower so I can actually make the image wider here. So I've got a lot of space at the bottom. So once again, I'm just going to select these buttons and let's change the width maybe to 300. Okay. I'm going to take the Visit Slovenia and also make it 300 since I've got these lining on the left. And at this point, there's 24 pixels between my text view and the button. Let's make that a zero. I thought I'd constrained it to the guide, and I guess I didn't. And then I'm going to grab my guide again and just stretch it over a little bit more. That'll get my image a little bit bigger. And I can actually drop this down a little bit. Let's maybe make this um, 48. I'm going to save my project and let's test it. So there is the landscape view. Check to make sure all my buttons still work and they do. And then if I rotate it, tell the emulator I rotated and then uses the SW600 DP layout rather than the landscape layout and everything looks really good there. So that's how we can add tablet view and do both portrait and landscape for tablet. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Android app development cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.